One of my favorite anecdotes about write about a writer, about any writer, um, happen, happens to be about you. And it's about how writers help other writers. And um, it involves the master of horror, Stephen King, um, and how he kind of went above and beyond what people might expect on your behalf. Can you share a little bit of that story with us? Yeah, this relates to uh, my start in publishing where I couldn't get a, an American publisher. And I was living in London. I got uh, news from my publisher that Stephen King was coming over for a book tour and they were throwing a, a huge party for him. Um, now for most authors, you know, you're, you're, if you're in the same town as your editor, you, you might get taken out to, to pizza, <laughs> a pizza <laughs> lunch. Stephen King, his British publishers, <clears throat> rent out uh, Middle Temple, which is the hall where Twelfth Night premiered. I mean, like, when Shakespeare wrote it. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> catered, you know, catered dinner, and they had Alabama 3 playing with the, the Soprano soundtrack, of course. Wow. Yeah. Um, so I was kind of nervous about going to this. And then I, I found out that, uh, of course, my British publisher had been sending him boxes and boxes of books through the years, everything they published, they wanted to send Stephen King. And he'd been sticking him in his closet. <laughs> <laughs> Except he needed something to read on the flight on his way to London. And so he went into his closet and spilled a box of books on the floor and uh, he happened to pick up China Lake and open it up. And I wish I could say that he like read the first paragraph and like, gasped with <laughs> the beauty of the prose, et cetera, et cetera. Actually, he decided that the font was nice and big and would not strain his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it takes, man. Whatever it doesn't matter. Like. <laughs> so he stuck it in his carry-on and read it on the flight. And when he landed, he told the, the publisher that he loved it. And they gave him all the rest of the books I'd written that's time. And he said, who's asked who my U.S. publisher was? And they said that I didn't have one. And most, most authors would just say, huh, well, that's screwy. <laughs> um, he actually started sending my books around to U.S. publishers. And he wrote a, um, a blog post encouraging people to read my books. Wow. And then wow. he wrote a column for Entertainment Weekly urging people to read my books, wow. which was wonderful and horrible yes. for, for about 12 hours because I realized that he had written this column because he was still having trouble getting publishers to take me seriously. He was handing wow. me novels, and they were saying, "Oh, who's this American? Lives in London. She's written a series. Yeah, you know, we don't pick up series that that, that have already been, you know, that have got that are several books in." Um, but within uh, by the next morning, I had fourteen U.S. publishers emailing me. Holy cow! And the power of Stephen King. Wow. I had to be. It had to be surreal to have someone like him. Right he, he's a big dog and he barks people listen but you know what he's <laughs> he's an extremely generous person i cannot thank him enough he um he pays it forward every day for writers uh musicians artists especially you know after he uh, was hit by mm. a van and nearly yeah. Yeah. he started a, a foundation to um, a nonprofit to help fund medical needs for writers who didn't have uh insurance well, that's what he's wow. that's that's how far he goes to help other other authors and and, and artists so he's a good guy he's got a big heart <laughs> yeah. he reminded me of like my favorite high school english teachers it was, uh, it was really wonderful to get a chance to, to thank him in person 